she wanted to be a vet of sorts, um, someone that looked after animals and uh, talked about having her own her own place where animals could go. And she had a kitten for for Christmas, and uh, his name's Vimto, and uh, Vimto loves and misses her very much. Ethan, my eldest. Josh was 11, Ethan was 13. I mean, they were beautiful boys. They wanted to go Pokemon in Pokemon hunting in Hyde Park. And I said, you know, when you come back from holiday, I said, we can go down there, spend a day in London. And, you know, that would have been kind of nice. Tracy was bubbly, great mum, loved, just loved life. She loved to live life. They loved, they loved the bedding down at night and all the jokes, playing cards, you know, having a laugh and the banter, all the noises at night. I mean, we couldn't sleep on this site because all the cows kept moving at about four or five in the morning and waking everyone up. We all sat down, had a bite to eat, all having a laugh and a joke, just saying, can't wait to get home because they wanted to go Pokemon hunting and all that stuff. And then we all hugs, kisses, Press that and then we all got back in the car. We pulled up behind some lorries, just crawling along. Everyone slowed all down and and then that was it. Bang. <laughs> And then I looked down at this car and went, oh my God, I couldn't believe it. I held Jake and then I must have realised who he was and whatever, he went out of the way. And, and then I just stood in the middle of a bloody road, looking. I was getting ready for bed and uh, I heard a car pull up outside and I thought, that was strange. Um, I expected Jake and Amy to have gone back to their dads, um, but I still hadn't heard from them. And uh, I went down to open the door and um, it was the police. They told me that they were really sorry. <laughs> but Amy had been killed. You know, I thought that was <clears throat> the worst day of my life, my kids being killed. But I think it was three weeks later when I went to the funeral directors and actually saw them dead, cold, in their coffins. You know, I continue to see drivers using their phones. It sickens me. If they had seen the devastation they brought my family or to other families by breaking the law, using phones illegally, distracting themselves from driving a potential weapon, would they be as sickened as we are?